Father, this evening in this place, we are so grateful for your presence, Lord. Because it's more of you, Lord. Then we see more love and more power. The more of you, the more we are transformed and changed. The more we, we, we seek your face, the more we draw near to you, Father. Do you not draw near to us? Do you not respond? If we knock, the door will be answered. If we seek, we'll find. If we ask, Father, you will, you will answer us, Father, this evening in this place. Let us have an expectation for what it is that you desire to do. But let us come into this place and worship you with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength. You are our God. You are our King. You are our Lord. And there is none besides you. All the honor all the worship, all the glory, all the praise that belongs to you in this place, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, good evening, everybody. Great to see you all this evening. Amen. And um, where is, Ro oh, there he is, Ronnie. Happy birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, Ronnie. And if there's anybody else here that has a birthday, lift your hand up so we can see where you are. Happy birthday. We wish you such a wonderful birthday. I mean, you see, you're not alone. Amen. <laughs> and another one over there. Happy birthday, young man. Amen. Let's give him a big God bless you. And at the back, is that another birthday over there? Happy birthday. Wow. Amen. And at the back over there, happy birthday to you. Praise God. Bless you guys. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. Amen. All right. How are you guys all doing? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's go. In our Bibles, <clears throat> let's go to Second Corinthians. Let's go to chapter three, verse number seventeen. First Corinthians, chapter three, verse seventeen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. My hands are cold. I'm not doing anything weird. It's just, <laughs> I don't know why my hands are cold, but they are. <laughs> Amen. I'm not like, I'm going to get you. It's nothing like that. It's just. <laughs> but you never know. All right. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Now, this, now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. How many of you are grateful that, we, that because the Spirit of God is living on the inside of us, we are being transformed. We are no longer the same. No matter what comes against us, God is for you. Amen. And and whom, whom God is for, it doesn't matter what man does. Amen. So God is for you. The Spirit of the Lord is with you. He has transformed you. He has changed you. You are a new creation. You are a new person. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for God's grace, for God's love, for God's protection, for God's mercy. I am so grateful that He loves me. How many of you are grateful that He loves you? Let's go to verse, well, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 1. It's basically the continuation. So he says, he says in, verse, in verse 18, he says, We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, everybody say therefore. Since we have this ministry, I'm, we, I'm so grateful we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Everybody say, do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. We don't walk in that anymore. Can you say amen? 
not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded. We do, we do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of God, who is the image of God, sh should shine in them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves, your bondservant, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who co commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse number seven. Are you guys with me in the back there? Amen. Now watch. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this ministry. We have this treasure. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. How many of you know that everything we do, everything we have is because of Him? So when God uses you, you need to know that it is Him that uses you. Amen. And the truth is, is that when God is using you, you must understand that the God of this age wants to come against you. That, that the, the ruler of this age desires to destroy you. He doesn't like you because there's a treasure in you. There's a treasure that's in you. And, and it's not yours, it belongs to him. But the enemy knows it's there and will do everything he can to stop you. So he'll come against you with all kinds of, 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 of force and different things that, that you'll have to face. But I want you to know that you are able because God is with you. Are you guys with me? Okay. He says, he says that the excellence of the power of God, of the power may be of God and not of us. He says, we are hard pressed on every side. Let me go to my notes. I'm not reading in my notes. We are hard pressed on every side. The word hard pressed there actually means to be distressed, to be afflicted, to be oppressed. It would kind of be like this. It would be pressed together, hard pressed. So in other words, if I'm standing here, it's like the enemy is pressing against me on both sides and trying to squeeze me. Are you guys with me? We are hard pressed. The enemy is pressing against you. The enemy wants to stop you. That's his desire. Because there's a, there's a treasure in these earthen vessels. There's a treasure. There's, there's a secret. There's things that God wants to do in and through your life. You carry the ministry of grace in you. You carry the spirit of truth on the inside of you. And the enemy doesn't like it. And so he'll do everything he can. He'll do everything he can, he can to distress you, to afflict you, to oppress you. We're hard pressed on every side. But I want you to see it. It's, like, it's kind of like a building that's being pressed, pressed, pressed. But the Bible says, but we are not crushed. So we might be pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed. We are perplexed, which means that we, we, we might have lost. We, we might have want. We might have doubt. We, we're perplexed. How many of you know what it's like to be perplexed? Because the, the weight of the world comes sometimes, and, and worries come sometimes, and anxieties come sometimes. So we experience that feeling of being perplexed. But the Bible says, but not in despair. In other words, we might be perplexed. We might be in, in, in situations, but not in despair actually means, but we're not actually in great trouble. That's what it means. It means we're not actually in great trouble. Even though it may feel like we're in trouble, it may feel like the situation that we're facing is impossible to get out of you. God wants you to know it's not that great, this trouble. Amen. It may not feel like it, but don't worry about how you feel. <laughs> persecuted. Everything might be coming against you. Everyone might be coming against you. Everything might feel overwhelming. But the Bible says this, and I love this so much. It says, but not forsaken. In other words, He will not leave you. Doesn't matter how lonely you feel, how broken you feel, how hurting you feel, what you're going through, He will not leave you. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Struck down. You might feel like you've been struck down, but you haven't been struck out. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and then he, 
goes on, he says, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also might be manifest in our body, which just tells us that, listen, we're going to go through some stuff. Just like he went through some stuff, we're going to go through some stuff. And I want you to understand that the enemy is, is, is like a, a lion seeking whom he may devour. That's his desire to bring death and destruction, to stop you from believing that living inside of you is he that can do the impossible. This is so powerful that the one who can do the impossible lives on the inside of you. The problem is we get into, into situations where we are hard pressed. We get into situations where we're persecuted. We get into situations where it's very, very difficult. And in those situations, it's hard to see what God wants to do. But He wants you to know that even in those moments, even though it feels like it's the most difficult thing, it's the most, most painful situation, you're okay. The trouble, it's not that great. The pressure, it's hard, but you're not gonna be crushed. Are you with me? That's what he wants you to know. Now let's go to Psalm 30, verse number one. I need to show you something because oftentimes we get into a situation and sometimes we get into a situation and it's absolutely your fault. Your situation and my situation, your fault. No, it's actually, what I'm trying to say is it's actually our fault. Many times we bring calamity and different things in our own path because of choices we make, decisions we make, and things that we decide to do. Are you guys with me? But it's not always like that. Sometimes things come our way and we didn't do anything wrong. You have to understand that there really is an enemy. <laughs> oh, there really is a devil. And he really doesn't like you. It's okay. But why don't we, why don't we, why don't we, why don't we say we'll win on Wednesday? Why do we only say it on Saturday or Sunday? Why don't we say it in the middle of the storm? Why don't we say we'll win and get in the front of the boat in the middle of the storm and shout, we win. I love it. <laughs> Have you read the book, devil? Do you know what it says in the end? I know your destiny. I know your future. <laughs> I know where you end up. Ooh, you're gonna be in the lake of fire. Oh yes, devil, that's where your destiny is. You can shake, rattle and roll. You can scream, you can hold on. But I want you to know that the day is coming where you will be utterly defeated. That's right. That's right, because right now the enemy is like, is like a lion that's vocal cords have been taken away. So what he does is he looks really mean, but when he barks, well, he doesn't really bark. When he growls, it's like, rah, rah. there's nothing there. The only time he can inflict you is when you give him the opportunity. But I'm here to tell you this evening, church, that even though you might be hard pressed, even though you might be persecuted, even though you might be in distress, I want you to know that God is with you. And oftentimes the reason why we go through these things is because the enemy knows what you carry. Let's go to Psalm 30, verse number one. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. David's in great distress and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. And you healed me. Oh, Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. Listen, when your soul comes up from the grave, you were not in a good place. And you kept me alive that I should not go down to the, to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. Now watch this. You see, what happens to so many of us is when we go through these situations, we often think that God is angry at us. That's why we're going through what we're going through. But I want you to see what the Bible says. This is so good. 
How many of you know that God is awesome? Come on. He is so wonderful. He is so full of mercy and love. Take a look at this. I want you to know that God gets angry. Okay, you didn't say amen. That's okay. All right. Take a look. It says in verse number five, it says, for his anger. So I want you to know he gets angry. But the difference between God and you and me is that his anger doesn't last very long. The Bible says his anger is but for a moment. In other words, God doesn't hold the grudge against you. God doesn't hold something against you. His anger is but for a moment. So even if you did do something you shouldn't have done, if you come before him with the right heart, with the right attitude, I want you to know that his anger is only for a moment. I don't think you understand how great this is. The God of the universe who could be all angry and smite you in literally with not even a blink of an eye only gets angry with you for just a moment. Just a moment when you let him down, when something goes wrong. And, and he doesn't even get angry with you often. David was really bad. <laughs> you don't believe me, go read your Bible, okay. <laughs> you see, it's not like us that when we get angry and we have a right to be angry, see, God has a right to be angry, but he lets it go. We go and complain. Post it all over Facebook and hold on to it forever. Come on. But there's a treasure in earthen vessels. There is a treasure inside you that the enemy definitely doesn't want to, to see your light. Let it shine. He doesn't want your light to shine. He doesn't want the treasure to come out. The enemy does, doesn't, it desires greatly for you to be in that place where you are stuck. Isaiah 40, 54 verse 8 says this, With a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. Man, let me tell you something. While I was praying and standing over there this evening, that's what I heard the Lord say. He said that He will redeem you. 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 He will renew you. He will restore you. He will redeem you. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I want you to know that our God is the Redeemer. He will redeem time. He will redeem what's been stolen. He will redeem what the enemy came to do. He will redeem it. He is a God of mercy. His anger is only but for a moment. But, 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 but oh, but He is good. You see, the thing is, this is the thing. The thing is, this is the thing. <laughs> Man, what happens to us is we get stuck. That's why it's so important that you hear the voice of God, guys. That's why here at Oceans, it's our, it's our, it's our priority to, to help you connect with God to make room for the presence of God, to make room for His Spirit so that you can connect with Him because you need to be able to hear from Him because the reality is you might be stuck and everything might look bad, but you are somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. You're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future. And I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future. And I look much better than I look right now. Stop now. Give the Lord a clap. Oh, you see, you've got to see it. 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 You have to believe it. Oh, the enemy wants to remind you. He wants to remind you of things that you did wrong. He wants to hold you stuck. Oh, man, all I can think about is when Jesus... When Jesus was with the 70 and they came back and said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. <laughs> and he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You see, there's such a fine line be between being in the spirit and being in the flesh. 
But being in the Spirit requires you to step out. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she had to reach out with, with an expectation. She had to, she had to believe for, for what was unbelievable. That's why Jesus said to her, your faith has made you well. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. Oh, the prophet was clever. He was so clever. He knew, <laughs> this is not a biblical prophet. This is one that lived just a little while ago. There be New Testament prophets. But he understood something. Kim Clement understood. He understood that if he could get you to see yourself the way God sees you, the enemy wants to show you. He wants to show you his plan for you. And in your circumstances, in the situation that you're in, all you can see is darkness. All you can see is doom and gloom. But if you take a look and see what God says about your future, then you will begin to understand and you will begin to see that there is much, much more to you than meets the eye. Why? Because there is a treasure in earthen vessels. There is a secret. There is something about you that is unusual. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you have to be able to see it. It's not name and claim, but it's already in the spirit. It's not what it is. We're not, that's not what I'm doing. Let me show you. Amen. Amen. I'm so tired of the same old, same old. <clears throat> he says in Psalm 130 verse 5, he says, For his anger is but for a moment. Everybody say, his favor is for life. There is a treasure in earthen vessels. There is a secret. His favor is on you. His favor, listen to me, church, is living inside you. He has placed His Spirit on the inside you. The Bible says He will never leave you nor forsake you. He has, he, he, nothing can separate you from His love. His hand is already on you. His favor is already on you. You may feel like you're in a moment of, of anger or something's gone wrong or you're busy being punished, but I'm here to tell you this evening that that, that is not the case. The word life there in the, in the Greek, in the Hebrew, <laughs> actually means that that favor is for a lifetime. It's, it's a lifetime of favor. It's a lifespan of favor. That's the type of favor that we have from our God. It says weeping may endure for, for a night. <laughs> weeping may endure for a night. It may last, but the Bible says it will only last for a season. Your weeping, your, your suffering, whatever it is you're dealing with, it will only last for a, for a certain amount of time and then it will be over. That storm will pass. Whatever it is that you're going through, it will pass. Amen. Come on, guys, stay with me. Stay with me this evening. Amen. Amen. Weeping may endure for a moment. Just a moment, just an evening, just a night. I, I just love this. It's, it's, he says, but joy. Joy comes in the morning. Why is this so important? It's important because you need to understand that even though you might be going through something and it feels like you're in literal mourning. Mourning means weeping or weeping and mourning. Weeping actually means it's like tears are rolling down your face. You're in, you're in, you're in internal suffering. You're, you're going through something so great. But the Bible says that joy comes in the morning. It's only going to last for a season, for a, a short period of time. But then joy will be your portion once again. 
joy, the joy of the Lord. Because there is a treasure in you guys. There is a treasure. There is a secret. There's God's plan, His Spirit. We, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We have the, the ministry of the Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And, and the Lord, I believe, wants, wants us to, to know because His Word says it, so He wants us to know it. That even though you're going through all of these things, He, he has given you His favor. You have His favor. And because you have His favor, because you have this ministry that He's given you, and we're going to talk more about ministries tomorrow. So if you come for that. But even though you're going through that mourning or weeping or whatever it is that you're dealing with at the moment, that joy is right around the corner for you. But you need to understand that His favor is yours. He did everything to make sure that you would be His. And the enemy is desperately trying to keep you stuck. But I heard the Lord say this evening when I was standing over there that I will redeem them. I will, re I will, I will make them whole. I will redeem them. But I need you to begin to see who you really are. What God has truly called you to walk in. Don't stay stuck. I know that many of you, I, I know what it's like to be stuck, to feel stuck. But I also know what it's like to be in that place where I am stuck. And then what I do is I look to see what God says. And I see myself in the future. And I see myself preaching. And I see myself in the new church building. And I see the things that God wants to do. I see it. I, I, I see it. And then I hear the enemy say, that'll never happen. You'll never be able to do that. That's impossible. It's going to do this. And everyone's going to say this and blah, blah, blah. And then I close my eyes and I look to the future. And I say, Lord, what is it that you say? What do you say, Lord? Because I say what you say. What you say, I say. <laughs> I haven't done it for so long. Amen. So it's time for you to understand that you have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And all the power of the enemy. But what will you say? What will you do? Are you going to be in that moment and are you going to let that whole thing consume you? Or are you going to understand that you have His favor, that you have His grace and His mercy, that you have a treasure inside you, that He desperately wants to bless your life with and the lives of others? So don't, don't give in or give up or stop when all the pressure's on you. But instead, rather, that's the moment, guys, when, it's in, when you're in that place where you, where you look to what God says about you, His plans for you, His thoughts towards you. How many of you know He's, he's, he's good? Amen. I remember when I was in South Africa many years ago, and Naomi and I left the ministry. We were in the ministry. I was, all I wanted to do was be in ministry. It's all I wanted to do. And then we left the ministry. We were married, and we, we traveled with an evangelist for two years. It was very difficult. And we were young. And we left the ministry, and I remember thinking to myself, it's going to be like maybe like a year break. And it turned into a very long break. We even moved to America during the break. But I remember being in a place where I felt completely as though 
any destiny or purpose was completely over because I felt like I ran away from my destiny. And, and I could, all I could hear was the voice of the enemy saying to me that it's over and you're never going to be able to do it. And I didn't even, I, I hardly even thought about going back into ministry. The only thing that I could think about is how desperately I wanted to get back to God, back to the presence of God, back in spending time with Him. And, and I remember when I, when, when, when I was in that place, that feeling of absolute despair. But I, but I, I, I know what that's like, and, and I'm, I really believe this evening that God is, 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 is wanting me to share with you how important it is for you to be able to get out of that place of despair. Not to forget the promises that He's made you. Not to forget His favor is on you. He loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. His favor is for life. And it's time for many of you to, to stop mourning, to stop weeping, to get out of this place that you're in, this place of being stuck, perplexed, hard-pressed, all that stuff. It's time for you to get out of that place. And I really believe that the Lord wants to, wants to touch some of you this evening. I know the message, you know, I know some of you have already, the Lord's already begun to speak to you, but, but I really believe that there are people here this evening that you just need to be strengthened and encouraged. And you need, you need to know that, that God's favor is on your life. And that's, that's the message this evening. Let's bow our heads. Lord, everybody in this place, even those that are watching online, we all have a different journey. And Lord, sometimes things happen and then we begin to wonder, have we stepped out of your will or did we do something that caused this all to happen? But Lord, we know even those that have gone before us, we had to go through different trials and they felt like they were they were going to be crushed, but they weren't crushed. They were hard pressed. They, they felt like they were, that, that they were being persecuted and that it was going to be so bad, but it wasn't so bad because they were able to see it through. And even those that, were, that didn't see it through, Lord, the end result is, 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 is going to be glory. So I pray this evening for everybody in this place, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would come that you would serve the enemy notice in the lives of, of these in this place. Father, that we would have a desire to hear your voice and not the voice of the enemy. That we would choose to believe that your word is true, Father. Even after David did so many things wrong, he still believed that his favor, that your favor was with him. Father, even in our own lives, when we've made mistakes or walked away, Lord, is your favor not with us? Can we not be restored and redeemed in just a moment because it's really like just the next morning everything can change again. If we set our hearts, if we set our minds to follow you, if we turn away from those things that have held us bound, if we repent, Father, change our mind to follow you once again, will you not breathe on us again? So Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you will breathe upon these in this place that you will breathe new life, fresh life, deliverance and healing and restoration and peace. And Father, more than anything, that that joy that comes in the morning will be their portion. That joy, that joy unspeakable, that joy, Father, that, that we know that we are yours. That we know that that our names are written in the book of life, that your mercy and your goodness and your love will follow us all the days of our life. And so in this place this evening, we choose you, Lord. I may not look really good right now, but I believe that I'm somewhere in the future. And I look better, Lord. Not by might or by power, but by your spirit, you'll get me there. Because there is a treasure in earthen, in earthen vessels. 
your power, your love, your goodness, and your mercy. I thank you for it right now. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're in this place this evening and you feel stuck, can you just raise your hand? I want to see where you are. If you've been suffering and feeling like you're stuck, I see the hand. I see that hand. I see all the hands. God bless you guys. Can I ask you to come quickly to the front? Don't be afraid. Come quickly. Come quickly. Let's give them a hand of applause. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I ask, as they're making their way to the front, if I can get my pastors and zone leaders and cell leaders, if you can come, please, I'm going to minister to these precious people. Amen. Ministry leaders, any leaders, come. If you look like a leader, come. If you don't look like a leader, don't come, please. Come, guys, let's begin to, let's begin. Stand in the front and begin to minister to them right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for restoration. I thank you for healing. I thank you for peace. I thank you, Father, that people will be unstuck, that joy comes in the morning. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your hand upon these precious people right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That's a church. Stretch your hands out towards them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Lord, that we're somewhere in the future and we look so much better because, Lord, your thoughts, your plans for us, they are good. You are full of mercy and compassion. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Once you've been ministered to, if you can make your way back to your seat, I appreciate it, amen, amen. God touched so many people here this evening, amen. We're not finished yet, so just hang on a minute, if you can. See, I need you to understand something. When I ask you to sing a song like, I'm not a, <laughs> we'll do that in just a moment. If I ask you to repeat after me, I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. What I'm actually doing is I'm, 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 I'm making you, not making you, I'm asking you to participate in prophesying over your own life. Hallelujah. How many of you in this place are afraid sometimes? Okay. I have, I have something that you can prophesy. Can, can we do it together? It goes like this. I'm not afraid of the lion's den. I'm not afraid of the fire. I'm not afraid of the 666, and I'm not afraid of the liar. Come on, that's everything. Come on. I'm not afraid of the lion's den. I'm not afraid of the fire. I'm not afraid of the 666, and I'm not afraid of the liar. Come on. I'm not afraid of the lion's den. I'm not afraid of the fire. I'm not afraid of the 666, and I'm not afraid of the liar. What did we just do? You see, what we just did was we prophesied, you're not afraid of the fire. What's the, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about being in the fire, like, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It doesn't matter what fiery furnace you're in, you're, you're gonna get out of it. I'm not afraid of the 666. That's the beast, the antichrist, and all the demons and devils put together. You're not afraid of them. So, so, I remember when I was a little boy and I would become afraid, I would begin to sing, the Lord is my shepherd. You have no idea how powerful it is when you begin to declare that God is in control. You, know, you have nothing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid of the liar. I'm not afraid of any accusation. I'm not afraid of anything the enemy accuses me of. You see, there is nothing. <laughs> I can't say that. You're not ready. <laughs> You have to be able to believe that God's word is true. Yeah. Of whom shall I be afraid? No one, nothing. There is nothing to be afraid of. You may not feel good now, but I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. There's a reason why we do it. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. What does that mean? That means your deliverance is available. That means that when, when there's an oppression and I'm suffering and I have depression and all this stuff, but let me tell you something, I saw that devil. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I saw him, I saw him in your life. I saw him come down. I saw that stronghold be broken. But I'm not the one who needs to believe it, you do. That's why I'm getting you to prophesy it. Are you guys with me? Come on, I used to do this stuff all the time back in the day. I think you need a little bit of, some more, a little bit of shaking, amen. Amen. If we get too spiritual for our own good, we just need a little bit of, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Come to the front, let's, let's, let's praise the Lord for just a moment, come on. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let's give some praise. Come on, let's give him some praise this evening. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, that's it, come on.
Jesus Christ is Lord forever. I can't stop praising His name. No, I just can't stop praising His name. No, I just can't stop praising His name, Jesus. No, I just can't stop praising His name. No, I just can't stop praising His name, Jesus. Come on, He's the King of Kings. Come on, He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. And we just can't stop. Come on, sing it out. I can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. I can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Come on, say, I will praise the Lord. Joy. We declare 
That you are our Redeemer, Lord. For there are people even in this place tonight, Lord, that need to be redeemed. That need to be restored, Father. For things have been, have been taken from them by the enemy. But you are the restorer. And things might not look that good right now, but we are somewhere in the future. And Father, we know that the thoughts that you have towards us, that they are good that they are to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope. And Father, we know that you will make the devil pay us back for what he has taken. We honor you and we love you. Lord, I pray the blessing, your blessing, the blessing of God be upon these precious people tonight. Let them leave here this morning. And Father, as your word says, let joy come in the morning. Let joy come in the morning, Father. So we have praised you even in this house tonight. The spirit of heaviness has no, no power over us. And we give you thanks for, for freedom, for freedom to honor you, to worship you, to walk with you, to be free, Father, from, from, the, from the power of sin that has held us bound. But now we are free with you. We just love you so much, Lord. We honor you and we give thanks to you. In this place, all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise is yours in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Go in the peace of God tonight. <clears throat> As you leave, give someone a big God bless you, a high five, an air hug, or whatever hug, men to men, woman to woman, unless you're married. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, guys.